Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here with the Raptors Die, just reacting to more NBA trade news. And, you know, when a Canadian gets thrown up on the trade block, Riker, you know that the Raptors Die just DMs. It gets flooded with potential trade scenarios and guys that kind of fit the timeline, kind of fit the style too. So we'll break out the rumor right here. Apparently Dylan Brooks and Kyle Anderson of the Memphis Grizzlies are available on the trade market. This is according to uh, Chris Fedor. And... These are two players, long, well, especially Kyle Anderson. He's long, but wiry guys that can kind of shoot the basketball, kind of do different things. They have two different skill sets, but specifically Dylan Brooks, the Canadian monstrous, monstrous end of the season and playoffs last year. And obviously Kyle Anderson also kind of had a breakout year with Memphis last season. Interesting that they're on the block, but it seems like the Grizzlies, after trading Jonas away and having a bunch of guys on the roster, they're trying to... Maybe go in a more youthful direction. We don't really know what's happening, but what's your initial reaction to do these guys on the trading block, and can the Raptors make a move for either of them? My initial reaction is, what in the world is Memphis trying to achieve here? Mm -hmm. What What is their direction? Because you're telling me you're trading away two of your starters. Yep. <laughs> two of your last season starters. Dylan Brooks was the best player in the playoffs for him. He averaged a whopping... 25 points per game and 40% from three. Like this dude was playing out of his mind. So I don't see how they're getting much better or if they're trying to trade up or if they're just trying to go young, like you said, and clear cap space. So I'm sure people have opinions on why Memphis is scheming the way they are. So drop a comment below, but Ben, could the Raptors get in here on the mix? Because these guys, they're 25, 27 years old. They both are coming off their best seasons of their career. We might flip Drogic midseason. So there is that need at that two spot to have pure scorers come in. We've chronicled last season that we don't have closers. We don't have shot creators. These guys would fit that bill. They're both young. They're exciting. One of them's Canadian. I, I'm, I'm getting excited the more that I hype them up here. What will we have to do? I know that there'd be a ton of competition I think that everybody would probably want to get their name in the hat because this is the kicker. The contracts are as reasonable as they could possibly, possibly get. Dylan Brooks, three-year, $12 million a year. Mm -hmm. That is that is the dream contract, Ben. Yep, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Dylan Brooks first as he's the, the Canadian amongst the two, even though Kyle Anderson has that long, wiry point guard vibe, even though he's more of a small forward, but can create slow-mo. But Dylan Brooks, as you mentioned, had a breakout playoffs last year. 6'7", gets buckets. He was trashed by a lot of Memphis fans for a long time in his career for just having the, the confidence of uh, Michael Jordan, but the skill set of Dylan Brooks, if that was the, the comparison. But now, it seems like Dylan Brooks' skill set has caught up with the confidence, and when that happens, when a guy that can shoot is willing to let it fly, willing to get his game going, especially potentially off the bench, as you mentioned with Gordon Drogic likely be dealt, even in a deal specific to this, that uh, that's that's an intriguing guy. Not only the fact is he a Canadian and reps Team Canada and all these sorts of things, but he fits exactly what the Toronto Raptors need because what have we been talking about? Long, wiry, athletic dudes that are a little bit raw. The skill set, they're young and all these things. Well, you and I think the Toronto Raptors will be good, right? I think they could be as high as the, the, the top four seed. That's sort of my expectations, and I've been a little bit flamed for that. You think we're definitely a playoff team at least. But the question marks are, will these long, athletic defenders that you know we expect our defense to be solid be able to translate on the offensive end? And we saw even in summer league it struggle at times. Well... You know, and even last season when we were the the tank and Raptors, it got it got messy on the offensive end. While the defense held true, even when we had our deep bench running out there game after game, so wouldn't it be nice just to have a guy that's a pure bucket that won't be a liability on defense? That's Dylan Burks. That's who you can bring in on a reasonable contract and who could potentially be traded on a Memphis Grizzlies team that no one really knows what they're doing because as a similar to our, our Seku video we just dropped yesterday or earlier, whenever these are going to be ordered, put out, the Memphis Grizzlies have a lot of roster spots so they're or, and cap space and stuff given up. So they've also been rumored and talked about as wanting to acquire a star in the next couple of seasons. So I, I, we don't really know the direction, but they're on the block, Riker, and... 
He'd be a perfect fit in terms of the offensive end, but the question is the package. The question is, if Masai Ujiri's cooking up the trade machine, what would we have to give up to get Dylan Brooks? Well, the question, it's going to be very ambiguous, very open-ended, because yeah. it depends on what is Memphis trying to accomplish. Is it clearing up space for the future? Is it, are they trying to be win now and, and, you know, trade two quarters for a dollar type thing? Or are they, are we going to see them bring in a guy like Patrick Beverly that they'll flip again immediately? So yep. without knowing that piece of the puzzle, it's really difficult to speculate. And I'm flipping suit through some of the reports now to see what other teams might offer. And there's some big packages out there, you know, a Warriors trade where they're getting James Wiseman. That could make sense. Yep. Um, a Celtics trade where they're bringing, or a three-team trade, I guess, Celtics and Magic, where they're bringing in Gary Harris, Mo Bamba, that could make sense, right? So I, I think a lot of the rumors are suggesting bring in talented young players. Yep. So if our immediate thought is let's offer them Drogic, that would have I, that wouldn't. There's not a world where they do a midseason trade, trade away their core starter that was arguably their best player in the playoffs for a guy that they're just going to flip yep. or clear cap space for. Like, that's just bad management of the front office. To me, it makes more sense to trade for a guy you can build around, potentially, and players that would come up, OG, Chris Boucher, Gary Trent Jr., right? Who you'd be willing to deal there? Is there anybody you'd, you'd, you'd offer up, or are they all untouchable? Yeah, I'm not giving up. A, Fred OG Siakam are off the table in a potential deal such as this for Brooks. And uh, Scott, and Barnes, they're all obviously. better than Brooks. They're all yep. better than Dylan Brooks too, which makes sense. You want to trade for the best player in the trade. Yeah, they're 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 better. They're Raptors. They're this. They're that. It's it's not happening. I'm not giving up Precious in a deal such as this. I'm not giving up Scotty Burns. The, then you get to the levels of the Malachi Flynn's and Chris Boucher's. Two guys coming into this year. It's looking like they're gonna. Ha they're going to be core pieces to this this roster in terms of coming off the bench and getting us buckets, creating and doing these things. So that's some value that could be brought into Memphis. Now, obviously, Brooks, I think, has higher value, especially coming off this most recent playoffs than uh, obviously Malachi Flynn, who did have a strong summer league, is looking beefy now, but uh, definitely is not highest on the, the trade sort of value mark right at this current moment. Boucher, I think, is a little bit higher. Was rumored to be a most improved, or was close. I think it was top three, four odds to be most improved player last year. And, you know, gets you buckets, plays on the offensive end. That could be a role position they, they feel more need, especially after bringing in a Jared Culver, who maybe they see promise and potential in uh, there in Memphis. Who really knows? But... I think if we added a first striker, if we added a first and then a Chris Boucher, I think that could potentially get the deal done if they're looking to move off of Dylan Brooks. Do you think that's too much to give up? Because Boucher is a very valuable piece and is more of a positional need at this point. But Brooks, with the, the promise he showed, and I guess you're giving up a Canadian for a Canadian there, but it's, it's an interesting look, especially when you compare it to other offers that are on the market. Yeah, well, it doesn't it doesn't go for the go young because Chris yeah. Boucher is what twenty seven years old, but same age. It does, yeah. Uh, no, Dylan Brooks is twenty five. Okay, yeah, the same range is just like you and I are the yeah. same age, right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But I maybe maybe it makes sense. Again, Memphis wouldn't be receiving somebody that they can build around, but that first round pick that'd be the kicker, and then maybe a filler piece. I would accept it because it would basically guarantee that you're going to flip Dragic midseason Get and back. bring back a guy like Moses Brown, bring, yep. bring back a big, everything that we've done in the off season would make sense because we've brought in all of these six, nine guys that can defend their long, their athletic, that should be able to naturally slip into that four spot, play positionless basketball. And the one true need that the Raptors have the least amount of depth, at that shooting guard spot, you bring in a legit score. So whether you want to nurture Trent Jr. off the bench for another season and bring Brooks in as the starter, which I think in this type of situation scenario, you definitely have to do and demote Gary Trent Jr. But now all of a sudden it's looking super nice because whoever you have coming off the bench is going to be a score first mentality. And it solves a lot of the, the need that the Raptors would have makes them more competitive in the playoffs. I love this trade. Don't know if it'd be enough for Memphis though. And like you said, you don't want to start offering up OG 
um, those guys because, frankly, they're better than Brooks. Brooks yeah. might have the better stats as a one-off season, but fit for the Raptors, all of our top three, four guys are better than Brooks. We can put that to bet. Yeah, no, without a doubt. We're keeping those them out of the, the conversation. The one question mark, and I guess this could be another debate in the future, Rikers, Gary Trent Jr., obviously Scotty Barnes, we want to get him as much minutes as po- as many minutes as possible being the fourth pick, potentially starting him at the two, people have said. And Gary Trent Jr., apparently, I think I, I saw this on Instagram from you know in the Discovery feed, apparently only averaged 5.5 points per game last season off the bench. Very small sample size, lots of injuries, but if if Trent obviously had remarkable games for the Toronto Raptors starting at the two and then definitely had a clear drop-off when he came off the bench for this team, it's a uh, yeah, definitely something to look out for. So maybe a little deterrent from a Dylan Brooks trade, but another guy we've we brushed over him. We've been stuck on the the Canadian in this podcast, which makes sense. You know, it's a more bigger name, but I think the more realistic get for the Toronto Raptors, especially if the Grizzlies are trying to rid themselves of one of these two players, is Kyle Anderson, who himself slow mo has an unorthodox style game, but he was a starter for this Memphis Grizzlies team. His defense improved. His stats all improved this uh, this last prior season. He's a playmaker. Stats are there on the screen, but he can he can pass. He can shootish. You know, mid thirties in terms of three point percentage. Gets to the rim. He does everything well. He's a jack of all trades and is a guy who I'm pulling, looking at his specific stats. Six nine can play that sort of point forward position. Exactly what the Toronto Raptors want, seemingly out of every guy that's out there on the market. Would you be interested in trading for slow mo Riker? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I'd offer Chris Boucher for him, Yeah, but he's not a historically good three-point shooter. Last season, shot 36% on yeah. four attempts, so that's a really promising stat line. Jack of all trades, perfect way to describe it. Almost six rebounds, almost four assists per game. Had the best scoring season of his career because he got the most minutes and mm. well, actually not even. It just seemed like he was more willing to be a scorer and take on that role. I... I think this guy would be a good fit despite slow-mo and everybody wanting the Raptors to be that sort of fast athletic team. But you know, the, we, we shied away from the fast break last season. I don't have the exact stats, but I would think by the numbers, the fast break scoring just wasn't there. And this is a guy that he can get it done in the half court, right? He's a true creator. He's a true finisher in the half court. So he's a guy that I think you could really put him into specific lineups that would complement his style of play. I just don't know what you'd give up for him. Hopefully less than you would give up for a Dylan Brooks. Yep. Would you give a Malachi Flynn for him in a potential trade trade package? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Cause then you'd have to trust a guy like Delano Banton or somebody to be back a point guard, which is really tough, but you know, you'd be definitely improving if you're trading Malachi for Dylan Brooks, you know, you're, you're, you're getting the best player in the trade. And that usually means you're the winner of the trade. So I'd do it. Yeah, see, I, I don't know. And I don't know if the Grizzlies accept that either because they've had a, a large contingent of, of point guards that they've fed in and out there of a, on that team right now. Rondo's still on that roster. And who really knows what's going to happen with what, what team they're going to have going into next season. But I get what you're saying. Kyle Anderson's definitely the better player than a Malachi Flynn because I think that's a level of player you'd probably have to trade a young sort of piece that's a lower contract and lets the Grizzlies have more flexibility going into the next season. But... Malachi Flynn's young, has that potential. He's looked like he's taken a step forward this year in Summer League, so I wouldn't be as quick to jump on a potential Flynn for for Anderson trade, but if you can get him in for maybe a a couple of second-round picks and some salary filler at the end of your bench, you do that. You do that. He's he's, he's a perfect complement. He's a guy that would definitely be in the rotation, and as we said with Dylan Brooks, we have a lot of long, wiry, which... Uh, Kyle Anderson definitely is. He's that. But they're raw. Their skill set isn't necessarily there. However, their athleticism is great. Anderson's the opposite. Athleticism, he's a good defender. He's definitely improved on the defensive end. However, the skill set, he is just dripping in, in skills. Everything you want for someone to do on a basketball court, he is able to do. Maybe not at the the level of a LeBron James or something like that, but he can do everything out there on the basketball court. So whatever the Raptors need to plug him in to play, someone, to, one of the young guys doesn't perform as well as we'd hope this season. Anderson can sort of take up that role and fill a need, fill a need for this Toronto Raptors squad. And you and I want this team to win now. So getting him just on a cheap, if there's a fire sale for him running out, 
I, I'd love to see it. Yeah, don't get why there would be a fire sale, but yeah, everything you said, I agree with. Hopefully something happens. This would be very exciting. Two very, very, very reasonable, borderline optimal, like you would do anything for a contract like these guys have in the NBA. So hopefully mm -hmm. something happens there where they can get their name in the hat, but we'll see. Memphis is certainly a wild card just with the way that they're shuffling around their roster. You and I can't really decipher a clear direction, so anything could happen, but I'm sure people will be excited about this one, Ben. So sign us off. I think we've rambled enough about it. Well, Riker, my final take, my final take is they brought in Bledsoe, then they brought in Rondo, and they brought in Beverly in that trade too. It's a lot of point guards that are older with big contracts on expiring deals they brought in. Maybe we just trade Brooks for Drogic. So straight up, who says no? I say yes, Ben. <laughs> I'd say yes as a Toronto Raptors fan. Obviously, the Grizzlies aren't doing that, but you never know. But you guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, all that cool stuff. Record, do you have any last words on these players being thrown up on the market? Hope it happens, Ben. Cheers.